Mater Trail has a very impressive record, Charlie. Six out of seven, and we haven't seen him since his really good win in the Irish Guineas. How's he been? He's done very well of late, uh, Jim. Um, he's a, I put both him and Caribus, uh, they've both put up uh, brave performances on their second starts from the, uh, from the Guineas in respects to you know, Native Trail. You know, some people would have sat there and said, well, should he have won more impressively in the Irish Guineas? Uh, and, and, and likewise for Caribus. But I just think that, that showed how you know, tough that Guineas, English Guineas was. I think we had two good Colts went toe to toe with one another. Um, and I'm not saying it, it, it was felt on their second run, but I'm seeing a, a, a stronger and, 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 and a very fresh and well individual uh, going, into, uh, going into the Coral Eclipse this weekend. I think in the past you've spoken of, of him as a, a man among boys as a two-year-old. As a three-year-old, uh, have they caught up, do you think, the others, or has he still got that physical superiority about him? On what we've seen uh, in, in the Guineas, he still has that macho figure against the, the three-year-old uh, division, for sure. Um, as we know, we're taking on these, uh, the elders this weekend, um, so, you know, He's not going to look out of place in the paddock, and, and, and as we know, it's a, it's a great race for a, a wait for age, and um, him receiving you know, that weight allowance uh, against those older horses, I think, is going to be a huge advantage because, like I say, we're not dealing with a, with a should we say, an unfurnished three-year-old. He, he's a, a, a fully developed three-year-old. But really, the outstanding question is whether he's going to stay the mile and a quarter at Sandown. Now, how confident are you that he's going to do it? Confidence uh, in, in, in what we've seen, yes, we're confident. We've, we feel he's, he's got the strength to be able to do it. He, he, his run style, where he's, we've seen him many a time, sort of going through that sort of, as we would say, a flat spot and then picking up, and, and he's seen those races out strongly over the mile uh, in the Guineas and, you know, at the end of the day in, in, the, in the Irish Guineas. His best work was the last couple of hundred yards there. Um, so, you know, we, we are confident with our, within ourselves of hopefully he can go the mile and a quarter. Um, on, on respects to pedigree, you know, as we know, his bioasis dream, you know, out of an observatory mare that, you know, there's bits of the mare side of it, you can, you can say he's, he's got a, a good chance of staying there. Second down, obviously, one over the mile and a half. As we know, with Oasis dreams, you know, we saw midday winning, you know, multiple winner over the mile and a half at group one level. So that side of it, yes, there's, there's bits of it you can hopefully enhance your confidence. But as what we've seen as an individual and, and, and his run style, we, we feel it's time for him to, to be tested over the mile and a quarter. It's the right time of year to do it as well. You know, we, 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 he's ticked his boxes in being a, a classic winner. Um, we know it's an important part of the year now and, and we've got uh, very much a, a second half of the season to, uh, to map out. And uh, should we see that mile and a quarter out, that's going to open up an array of options for him. And, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to be realistic. If we don't see the mile and a quarter out, well, you know, he drops back to the mile and, you know, you debate whether you go to the Sussex or whether you go to the Breeders' Shack Lamar or, or a Breeders' Cup turf. So, um, you know, the options are there. And so it's going to be very much a, not a watching brief, but it's going to be very uh, instrumental on, uh, on Saturday of, of how his second half of the season we mapped out. You mentioned the three-year-olds and the pull they have, the big weight pull they have in the Eclipse. Um, Vadini is the favourite. Now, you have a very, very good line, I would say, on uh, Vadini because you had Modern Games who ran third to him in the Prix de Jockey Club, uh, and he won by five lengths, but was he flattered, do you think? And, and do you think that Modern Games may have just have finished a bit closer with, say, a better draw and not having to have to do as much work? Yes, of course, you, would, you, you, you could say that for, for as respects to modern games. Modern games, at the end of the day, clearly didn't stay the mile and a quarter, um, which was always a question mark for us. Um, but you know, I say he had the, he had the wide, the wide draw. He, he had to do the, a lot of the donkey work himself there on, on a lead that wasn't particularly uncontested either. Um, but what Vadini has gone and done, he, you know, he has gone and he's gone and done it over the mile and a quarter, uh, and, and looks uh, and done it well and strongly. Um, then he's sort of trying to give you know, ourselves confidence in what we're doing is we, in, in the calibre of horse we're dealing with. You say, well, how would he have stacked up in the guineas? Uh, you know, and, and, and that's where we have all the aces um, in, in the form around the guineas horses. Um, and uh, you know, going into it again, like I say, they've got the confidence, they've gone the mile and a quarter trip, but we've got the confidence, we feel we've got the best horse. The mile and a quarter is the big question mark. And tactically, it, it's a small field. Um, 
is he versatile enough to, to take it up if he has to? Yeah, I mean, tactically, like I say, it's a small field. Um, I wouldn't like to say he'd be going out there to, to make the running, um, but he's a horse that, you know, going this trip, if they went steady, you know, I say this, this horse is a classic winner over a mile. So if it comes into, they wanted to, you know, uh, say, let's click, say, click through the gears, turning for home, he's one horse that I'd be confident that he's, he's got the gears to go through. Um, and, you know, I say, going, going through into that uh, final furlong, if he's still there um, in, in the hunt, um, we know he's got the gear changes there. Hurricane Lane runs in the Grand Prix de saint Cloud on Sunday. Uh, first of all, what reports have you got about the ground at saint Cloud? I mean, it's been reported this morning there uh, that um, you know, they've, they've got a bit of rain forecast. Um, the ground looks as though it's going to be on the slower side of good for sure. Um, and, you know, whether it be good, good to soft, we'll be, we're more than happy to be turning up there for sure. If it had been quicker, so if it had been quicker than that, then that would have been, you know, raised concern and for, up for discussions. But uh, as, as we stand, like I say, it should be on the slower side of good, which is, uh, you know, most certainly a positive to Hurricane, uh, to Hurricane Lane. It'll be 15 days between runs, the Hardwick, into the Grand Prix. Uh, what did you make of his run in the Hardwick? Um, I'll be honest, it is, I, I, was, I was pleased with the run, you know, post-race. Um, Pre-race, I was going in there confident that we, 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 you know, we got our level of fitness up there. But he was a, you know, he's a three-year-old, three turning four there, done very well as a, as a physical. Um, he certainly tightened up for the run, should we say, that's for sure. William was very pleased the way he travelled. Uh, he said, he, you know, he, he went through his girths and, and stayed on at the, at the pace that we all saw. Um, what we've seen since he's come out of the race is a, a, a sharper, tighter uh, model. And, um, you know, uh, 15 days, some people might say that's, you know, uh, have we given him enough time between his runs? But um, first and foremost, it was always our plan to, to go to the Hardwick and then hopefully follow up by the, the Grand Prix de Paris, uh, Grand Prix de saint Cloud, sorry. Um, and, um, you know, we, what we saw last year, he thrived on his racing. You know, again, questions could have been asked about us, you know, going to the Derby, English Derby, Irish Derby, and then, you know, backing him up um, into a Grand Prix de Paris last year, is, uh, and, and we, uh, that was probably his most impressive victory at the end of the day. Um, so he's a horse that uh, thrives off his racing, uh, and what we've seen to date, we, we're very happy with him. Of course, it was eight months that he had off before the Hardwick, so, and, and you've got a long-range plan, haven't you, for this fella? Very much so. I mean, you know, this is a horse that we're working back from a, a pre dark to Triumph. Um, you know, we saw him run a, a, a very solid race there um, last year in ground that we know he is a versatile horse. I mean, uh, we know he's better on the slower conditions, uh, or happier, should we say, on, on, on the slower conditions. So, um, you know, come the first week of October, as we know, historically now, it's becoming uh, on the slow side of good, should we say. Um, and so, like I say, it's always been that long range plan is the Art Triumph. So we, we've set our stall out, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I'm confident in, in going into the, the Grand Prix de saint Cloud this weekend. The plan was always to go to Hardwick for our first run, Grand Prix de saint Cloud, and then uh, thereafter we'll give him one more uh, prep run into the, uh, into the arc. And whether that be you know, in, in Ireland, England or France, uh, we'll, we'll make that decision nearer the time. And of course the style of racing in, in France is very different. It's a sit and sprint. Uh, is this sort of a, another way of just getting a bit of grounding and getting used to the rhythm and the, and the style of racing over there? Uh, yes. Um, look, he, he's, a, he, he's a very solid horse. In that you, of course, you never really want to be out on the front end in, in these group ones. You, know, you, you might go away with it once or twice, but you know, when, you, when you're stepping up to uh, stepping up to running in an arc, it's going to be hard to go out there and make it in an arc. So he's a horse that, like you quite rightly say, their style of running, they, they can sometimes go a bit easier, which we saw last year. They went steady because of the ground conditions, but um, you know, he, he, he'll sharpen up, he'll get more race tactical speed, should we say, um, as, as, as his season progresses, hopefully. Um, he's a horse that, uh, from a jockey's point of view, I feel at the moment, he, he's a very nice straightforward horse to run. He jumps and he, you, know, you can go forward on him and ride him positively. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully that'll, uh, that'll put him in good stead going into, into the second half of the season.